Welcome to today's Tech 20 on Dropbox. I am Rebecca Anderson and I am the Educational Technology Manager here at the Napa County Office of Education. And this is a photo of me from when I was delivering a face-to-face -face training as part of our teacher dinner series on technology. After today's webinar, be sure to check out our upcoming trainings offered as part of the dinner series. And unlike this virtual session, we are able to feed you. Today's session is being recorded and I will be sending out to you a link to a web, web page that will contain links to any of the tools or resources that I mentioned so you don't have to worry about taking fast and furious notes. Um, just try and be involved and in the moment with today's session. Today, I will be explaining to you uh, what Dropbox is, talk about why you should add Dropbox to your toolbox, and explain the different ways you could use it. I'm also going to be sharing with you a tool called IFTTT, and that's a really cool tool that integrates with Dropbox, and it's super, super awesome. I love it. Um, it provides you with a ton of ways to automate certain aspects of your work and we'll be exploring how it works with Dropbox. Please, please, please keep in mind that today's session is an overview of Dropbox. This is not an in-depth, detailed training on all of the technical aspects of how to use the tool. Um, we only have 20 minutes and this session is really just meant as an overview. But my goal, though, is to give you enough information to help you get started and to help you feel comfortable, confident, and excited in trying out Dropbox or IFTTT. So let's get started. Dropbox is a file sharing service, and its main selling points, although there are many, is that you place your file or your folder that you want to share in your Dropbox which is a folder, and then you can access it anywhere you have an internet connection, and you can choose who you would like to share the file with. It's available by visiting dropbox.com, and you can sign up for a free account where you're going to get two gigabytes of free space, and then they give you ways that you can earn more free space up to 16 gigabytes. I know what some of you are probably already thinking. Um, it's probably I, I already have file sharing service I, and I have more space with them. Why would I want to replace that service with Dropbox? I don't want you to replace whatever service you have. Um, for those of you that are using Google Apps for EDU, you have unlimited space and that's fantastic. Um, if you are an NCOE employee, you have unlimited space with OneDrive and you don't want to give that up. Okay, so I don't want you to get rid of any of these services. They are all good and you're fine using them. What I do want you to do is to consider adding Dropbox to your toolbox. Um, I know that we all want to have that silver bullet tool that will do anything um, and do everything for us and keep us from having multiple tools. Um, sadly, it doesn't exist, and believe me, I would love to just have to work with one or two tools, but it's just not possible. For example, um, I work with teachers, therefore I need to be using Google Drive. I work here at NCOE, so I need to be using SharePoint and OneDrive. And that said, I also have to deal with people that are outside of these two groups, um, and they aren't using either of these tools. But I do know that many of them are using Dropbox, and therefore I use Dropbox. Um, and I've been using Dropbox for many years. I want to start out by saying that if you don't already have a file sharing service, you need to get one, and Dropbox is a good place to start. There is going to come a time, if you haven't already experienced it, when you're going to need to email a file, but yours or your recipient's email server rejects it because the file is way too large. So by using a file sharing service like Dropbox, you add your file to your shelled folder and the other person can access the file. Um, the other way is you can give, just send them a link and they can download it. And I'll talk more about how to do um, both of these ways a little bit later. 
Dropbox has been around for a long, long time. It is widely used. And one of the reasons I continue to use it is because it's integrated with over 300,000 other tools and apps. Um, because it's built into so many tools, it's a really, really easy way to move files or projects in and out of different apps. There's nothing worse than finishing up with a project and then realizing it's trapped in that app unless you sign up for a service to get it out. So if you don't have it now, get, drop, get Dropbox and you'll be ready to go when it's time for you to move your files or your project. Probably my favorite feature of Dropbox and one of the main reasons I use it is that if I want to share a file with someone else, um, my recipients do not have to have a Dropbox account. And this is huge because what this does is it makes it super easy for me to share my files with someone and they don't have to go through the whole process of having to sign up for an account just to get my files. And conversely, while it's nice to be able to push out files that way to people that don't have Dropbox, it is also nice to take advantage of the large number of people that do. And doing so allows me to have a shared folder um, that has files in it. And then anyone who has access to that folder can choose to add or remove files. And it's all happening within a single location. The other nice thing about Dropbox is you can access your files seamlessly regardless of whether or not you have an internet connection because it offers offline access. Um, and despite what you see on screen, I don't recommend taking your laptop to the top of a mountain. But if you do ever find yourself without an internet connection, you're going to be able to access your files. And the next time you connect to the internet, your files are going to sync up. And I'll tell you just in a moment about how to make sure that you have this um, capability. So if you're completely new to Dropbox, you're going to need to visit dropbox.com and select create an account. And you're going to go through the sign up process. It's very quick and easy. And the only information that they collect is what you see here on the screen. Uh, once you uh, sign up, you're going to have to select your plan. And you're going to just start out with the free plan that gives you the two gigabytes of free space. And after you click continue, you're going to get a message saying that Dropbox is being downloaded. And once it's downloaded, you have to install it by double clicking the download and following the prompts. So what's happening here is that Dropbox is essentially setting up a shortcut folder on your computer that will link to your online Dropbox account. So whenever you add a file or a folder to your Dropbox folder on your computer, all of your data will automatically be synced. So um, you, you don't have to do this install. You could rely upon Dropbox websites to move your files, but I do recommend going this approach because it makes moving your files and sharing your files really easy. And it's also what allows you to work offline. So if you want that capacity, you need to make sure you do this download and set it up. Most people don't realize this, but if you have multiple computers that you work from, you can install the Dropbox shortcut on all of them. That way, accessing your files in Dropbox is easy and it's seamless regardless of the computer you're on. And because you've installed the shortcut, you can access the files offline. Um, and then as long as you're connected or eventually connected to the internet, your files are going to sync across every computer you've installed Dropbox on. Um, to add Dropbox to other computers, you don't have to create a new account. All you have to do is visit the Dropbox website and on their homepage at the top of the right corner of the page, there's a link to download Dropbox. And then when you double click the download during the install process, it will ask if you already have a Dropbox account. You'll say yes, and then you're just going to enter in your login details and follow the prompts. In working with people, I noticed that there is some confusion about how to get the files into your Dropbox. 
Um, once you've installed Dropbox, you access it like you would any other folder on your computer. You just um, drag your files and your folders into that Dropbox folder. Um, on screen is a screenshot from a Windows computer and uh, you'll find Dropbox. It should be inside your home folder. You should see it listed under your favorites. Or you can always open your Dropbox folder by using the Dropbox icon that's located in the lower right corner of your screen. That's when I'm using Windows, that's how I'm constantly opening up my main Dropbox folder and then moving my other folders and files in and out of it. It's just by clicking on that icon in the lower right corner of the screen. If you are on a Mac, um, a the short the shortcut for Dropbox is also listed under Favorites, um, and it's also on your taskbar at the top of the screen. So I've got both of those highlighted in yellow. As you add your files or folders, they're going to sync to Dropbox's servers, otherwise known as the Dropbox iCloud, or Dropbox Cloud, sorry. Um, if you don't have a connection, they will sync the next time that you do have a connection. Um, and you'll know that they're synced because they will have a green check next to them. Um, if they need to be synced or they are in the process of being synced, you're going to see the blue icon that's got the um, kind of those recycle arrows on it. Um, sometimes people run into a problem when they move a file to the Dropbox and then they immediately log out or shut down their computer. Um, and then they go home, let's say, to access the file and they notice that it's not the right version or the file isn't even there. You have to let your files sync before shutting down or logging out if you're expecting to access the file. Once you've set up your computers with Dropbox, you're going to want to also install Dropbox on your mobile devices. Um, once you complete that install, on your mobile device, then all you have to do is access Dropbox like you would any other app. You touch it. Um, I definitely recommend adding Dropbox to your mobile devices because it can be a huge challenge sometimes to get your content off your mobile device into your computer or vice versa. And having Dropbox installed gives you more options and it just makes things a lot easier. I manage my Dropbox files primarily through my desktop. So to share a folder with someone, I just navigate to the folder inside my Dropbox, and then I right click on the folder, and I select share this folder. When I do that, then you're automatically bumped to the Dropbox website where then uh, all I have to do is enter in the email address of the person I want to share with and then I just click share folder. What happens next is that person gets a notification that a folder has been shared with them and if they do already have a Dropbox account the folder is going to automatically show up in their account. It's automatically going to be there and if they don't they're going to get an email notifying them that they need to have a Dropbox account to access the files. So sharing a folder in this way does require recipients to have a Dropbox account but the advantage of this is that now you have a single folder in which you both or multiple people can add, edit, or remove files. The danger of this is that if that's the only copy of your file or folder that you've put in your Dropbox um, you are at risk of someone potentially um, deleting that. And if that's not what you wanted to have happen, that could be a problem. So just keep that in mind as you are adding folders and sharing them using this approach. As mentioned earlier, my favorite feature of sharing files through Dropbox is that I can share files with someone and they don't have to have a Dropbox account. I use this when I need to send people files that are too big to send through email and I know that I just want them to take the file. I have no need to share a file with them in a, in a way in which everyone can add or delete files. So my sole purpose in using this approach is to just push files out and the recipient can then choose where to save them on their computer. 
I use this pretty frequently. Um, this is the most common way I probably share. And to do that, all you have to do is right click on the file or folder that you want to share and select share Dropbox link. Um, when you do that, it's going to seem like nothing happened, but it really did. What happened was Dropbox copied a link to that file or folder, file or folder to your clipboard. And all you have to do now is go to your email and uh, paste the link into the message. And then when recipients click the link, they can choose where to save the file on their computer. When the recipients receive your link via email and they click on it, they're going to see a screen similar to what I have up here for you. Um, in this case, I've shared a folder named audio. And inside that folder were files, and they happen to be audio files. And the recipient can either download the files individually, or they can choose to download all of the files as a zip file, or if they do happen to have a Dropbox account, um, they could choose to save the file to their own Dropbox as well. But know that that's, it's not a shared folder at that point. They've just chosen to put it there for their own convenience. 99% of the time I am accessing my files or folders that have been that are mine or that have been shared with me um, by clicking the Dropbox folder on my computer or my mobile device. But there are some times though when I'm not at my computer and I want to access them. So recently I was at an event and they had a computer lab available because internet access throughout the place was not very good. Um, and I was able to just cruise up to the computer lab, log into my Dropbox account, and I could access all of my files. And what's nice about that is once I um, log into my Dropbox and um, log into my Dropbox account through the website, and I could see all of my folders and files. It's a mirror of what I have on my desktop. Um, I also use the Dropbox website if I ever want to remove someone from a folder if I've shared it with them and I don't want them to have access to it anymore, or if I want to disconnect myself from a folder that someone has shared with me, that's when I go to the website. So that was Dropbox in a nutshell, and I want to also introduce to you today a tool called IFTTT. And what that stands for is If This Then That. And this tool also works with Dropbox. It's a free tool and it lets you create automated tasks. Um, as noted on the screen, you're putting the internet to work for you. Um, as you learn more about this tool and something called recipes, you're gonna find that you've got a, a whole new world opened up for you. I love this tool. IFTTT works by having you follow prompts um, to set up if-then statements to complete specific tasks and completed statements are called recipes. Uh, when you go to the site and you're working on it, IFTTT prompts you through the setup process. You don't have to write a single line of code. It's all just a matter of you choosing the apps you want and then choosing from a list of options avail available for that app. And as you explore the site, you'll see that Dropbox is a common ingredient for multiple recipes. So here's an example recipe. I set one up earlier that says, if I get an email in my Gmail account with an attachment, then that attachment will automatically be saved to my Dropbox. So all that happens automatically and I don't have to do a single thing. Here's another one. So let's say I've shared a Dropbox folder with some people and I wanna be notified when the files are dropped in it. Let's assume it's a really important folder. Um, so you could set up a recipe like this one, which says anytime a file is dropped into the folder, which I've named critical planning, I will get a text message alert because I want to know when someone drops something in my critical planning folder. If I've got a group of students, let's say that they're working on an Instagram project and I've asked them to tag their photos with um, Anderson Tech, I can tell IFTTT to take any photos that have been tagged with that and to then add them into my Dropbox folder. Again, happens automatically, nothing manual I need to do. Um, IFTTT is great um, because you don't have to come up with your own recipes. There are a ton of recipes on the site that you can repurpose for your own needs. 
I did a search for recipes that include Dropbox and there are over 839 pages of recipes of all kinds of stuff. Um, so today, if maybe you decide Dropbox isn't the right tool for you, um, maybe you'll at least consider getting IFTTT. There are over 168 different apps or channels and they all work together. Um, and like I said, on that uh, follow-up website, I'm going to have available for you some tutorials of IFTTT. IFTTT. Too many T's before. Okay, and then our final tool that I want to share with you is um, a nice. If you are feeling overwhelmed by having your files in multiple places, um, a tool you might be interested in getting is called MultiCloud. It's a free tool that lets you look at all of your cloud-based services through a single interface. For example, I've set up my MultiCloud site to show me my Dropbox files and my files stored in Google Drive. Um, Aside from the fact that it's nice to be able to see all of my files through a single location, um, what I really like is that I can also move my files between the two services. So let's say I'm running out of space on Dropbox and I don't need to have a file there anymore. I could quickly put it into a folder maybe that I had created on Google Drive and I can do it all through this interface. Well, we are at the end of today's uh, session. Uh, I'm going to hang on the line to answer any questions. If you weren't using Dropbox, I hope you'll consider adopting it and if it makes um, sense for you based upon your needs. If not, I hope you'll find some utility in IFTTT and uh, Mulch Tool as a way to manage all of your files that are in the cloud. So. Again, I will be sending out to you a link to the webpage that contains links to any of the tools and resources and tutorials that I mentioned. And thank you very much for listening today.